Insulated concrete forms or ICF blocks are modular interlocking units made of foam with plastic ties embedded in it. These units are dry stacked without mortar and are filled with concrete in the middle. ICF walls which were invented in the 1940s have been gaining a lot of traction in recent years and are becoming a solid competitor to wood construction. I recently visited a foam fabricators plant here in Dallas which produces insulated concrete forms for Fox blocks. In this video, we're going to cover the three main stages of production, the creation of polystyrene, pre-expansion and final expansion into blocks, as well as the recycling chain that is embedded in the manufacturing process. The first stage is the creation of polystyrene. Benzene, C6H6, reacts with ethylene, C2H4, in the presence of a catalyst like aluminum chloride to form the monomer styrene, C8H8. Under heat or by an initiator like benzoyl peroxide, the double bond between the carbon atoms is converted into a single bond and a polymer chain called polystyrene is formed. This liquid polystyrene is suspended in water to form tiny hard beads. The beads are then expanded with blowing agents such as pentane, C5H12, to diameters between 0.5 to 1 mm. The polystyrene beads are produced by Flint Hills Resources and shipped to the foam fabricators facility in large bags. Every bag has a unique tracking number, so you can trace the beads all the way to the finished product. This brings us to the second stage, which is pre-expansion. The tiny beads of polystyrene, which are nicknamed sugar salt, are poured into a sealed vessel and heated with steam. Around 80% of the trapped pentane inside the beads is displaced with air and the beads expand dramatically, thus reducing their density. The beads are allowed to sit for 24 hours in storage bags to cool and harden. A small sample from each bag is weighed to make sure that their density and performance meet standards. The last stage is the final expansion and creation of EPS blocks. Black polypropylene plastic webs are manually placed on a metal mold. These bridge the two EPS panels together and provide screw and attachment points for bracing and alignment. They are also used to attach finishes to the walls. Pre-expanded EPS beads are poured around these plastic webs. Steam is pumped into the mold and the beads rapidly expand, expel the remaining pentane and stick together. The finished product is pushed out of the other side of the machine. To recap, we started with a tiny polystyrene bead, 0.2 mm in diameter, pumped it up with pentane to 0.5 to 1 mm in diameter, expanded it with steam to 3 mm in diameter, and then expanded it one more time to lightweight beads that are at least 5 mm in diameter. The walls of these ICF blocks are 2 and 5 eighths inch thick. The distance between them varies. It could be 4, 6, 8, 10 or 12 inches. A standard 6-inch block weighs around 7 pounds. The blocks are checked regularly for any defects like misaligned ties, improperly fused beads, density and of course dimensions. They have a simple go-no-go no -go jig that measures the overall width and height of the blocks. Another important test is its resistance to compressive stresses which is the most important mechanical property of EPS insulation and building products. EPS has a compressive resistance between 10 to 60 PSI for most construction applications. The foam fabricators plant that we visited periodically conducts flexure strength tests to make sure the products meet standards. Blocks are cut into 1 inch by 12 inch pieces using a hot wire machine. Weights are then placed on top until the piece of foam snaps. This small piece of EPS foam, which are used to make Fox blocks, can hold up to 12.5 pounds, which is much greater than the required 7 pounds. This is an indicator of a strong product made of well-fused EPS beads. It's common knowledge that EPS is terrible for the environment and is a major contributor to global pollution. Environmental protection groups have been pushing to ban EPS around the world and I bought into this belief until I visited this foam fabricator's manufacturing plant 
and I learned more about the product. Just with most pollutants, it's humans that are to blame, not the product itself. EPS is a genius invention and it has a huge recycling network across the states and the world. Several recycling processes are even embedded in the manufacturing of the product. Pentane, which is removed from the beads, is heavier than air. It is collected and burned to convert water into steam, which is in turn used to expand the beads. After the beads have been successfully expanded, steam is cooled down and the condensed water is sent to an in-house filtration plant, where impurities are removed. The water is recycled and converted back into steam for the next batch of beads. If any blocks are faulty, the polypropylene ties are pulled out and the blocks and scraps are ground down into small pellets. This machine conditions the beads, grinds them into balls, then mixes them with virgin beads and adds them to the pre-expansion process. Because of structural and liability concerns, this scrap is only used in coolers and cups etc, not in ICF blocks. Finally, the foam fabricators plant has a recycling drop-off box where the general public and other companies can leave any EPS scraps. This densifier machine chops it into rough pieces, compresses it to remove all the air inside the beads and cuts it into standardized blocks. These blocks are sent back to the raw material supplier who starts the cycle all over again by melting them down, creating pellets and reintroducing pentane. A biodegradable version of expanded polystyrene does exist and foam fabricators actually mix some of those products at another plant. EPS is blended with an additive that catalyzes the degradation of foam under sunlight and moisture. It obviously can't be used in the construction field because your walls would lose insulation, but it's used to make other products like coolers, protective packaging, cups and plates. All in all, it was a fun and eye-opening visit. I was particularly impressed with their concern for recycling the product, capturing any expelled pentane and with the quality of the blocks. I'm going to release a video in a few days that dives into the specifics of Fox Blocks, ICF construction, as well as its pros and cons. So I hope you check that out. Hope you enjoyed that video. Let me know what you think about EPS and ICF blocks in the comments below. Also leave me suggestions for any other construction related topics that you're interested in. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. See ya.